plants, certain protists, and even some bacteria are able to photosynthesize. For plants, most photosynthesis takes place in the leaves. Specifically, photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplasts, organelles which are often in their highest abundance in the cells of the wide leaf structures. These organelles have a double membrane, and there are green membrane discs called thylakoids found within the inner space of the chloroplast, called the stroma. The thylakoids are stacked within the chloroplast, forming a granum. The events of the light reaction of photosynthesis will take place on the thylakoid discs, while the events of the Calvin cycle occur in the stroma. Before we go on, a quick word on energy. Energy can be present in the form of movement, or as stored energy, called potential energy. Potential energy can be stored in an object, simply based on its position, as we will see in this example. The rock has more potential energy at the top of the hill than at the bottom. This will become important to understand the light reactions. In the light reactions, solar energy is harvested and converted into two forms of chemical energy, ATP and NADPH. In order to absorb light, we need to have pigments. Pigments are molecules which absorb certain wavelengths of light while reflecting wavelengths of light that are not absorbed. The color that we see is the color that is not absorbed. Chlorophyll, one of the main pigments involved in photosynthesis, appears green, which means that it is absorbing wavelengths of light other than green, and the green light is being reflected and is not used in photosynthesis. These pigments are organized into photosystems. When this light is absorbed, the energy from that light gets transferred to electrons from the pigment. In the demonstration that we are about to see, the distance that the marbles are from the surface of the table represents the amount of stored energy in those electrons. The light reactions of photosynthesis require two photosystems. The photosystem is a series of pigments along with their associated electron transport chain, a series of proteins that accept electrons. The photosystems absorb sunlight, and when those pigments absorb sunlight, they transfer that energy into electrons. The electrons that are in the pigments start at a low energy state, but then when the photosystem absorbs a photon of light, those electrons have become energized. These high energy electrons are in an unstable state, yet what happens is that those high energy electrons are transferred down the electron transport chain, releasing that energy that they had stored. That energy, as we'll see, will be used to make ATP. There are two photosystems. Photosystem 2, which is the water splitting photosystem, and Photosystem 1, which is the NADPH producing photosystem. By the time those electrons get to the end of Photosystem 2, they are at a low energy state and need to be transferred to Photosystem 1. Here, yet again, another photon of light is absorbed by the photosystem, energizing those electrons again. Those electrons are passed down yet another electron transport chain where they will ultimately be transferred to NADPH. You'll notice these electrons are still at a high energy state, as marked by their distance from the table surface. So we see that two types of chemical energy have been generated due to the movement of these electrons. We will now look at more of the components involved with the light reactions. These molecules will all play a role in the following animation. As the electrons pass through the electron transport chain, they move protons against their concentration gradient from the stroma into the thylakoid space. The electrons are then transferred to a molecule of NADP+, reducing it to NADPH. The missing electrons must be replaced by the splitting of water. Splitting one molecule of water releases one oxygen atom two electrons, and two protons into the thylakoid space. The electrons are taken by the pigment, where they are excited by another photon of light and travel between the photosystems again, ending up as a part of another molecule of NADPH. 
when two water molecules have been split. The oxygen atoms can then form oxygen gas, one of the products of photosynthesis. All the while, more protons are being pumped across the thylakoid membrane. Diffusion attempts to equalize this concentration gradient by having the protons return to an even distribution on both sides of the membrane. ATP synthase, a channel protein, is the only path through the thylakoid membranes that these protons can take to return to the stroma. As the protons move through ATP synthase, they release energy, which is used to form ATP. We have now seen how all of these components are involved in generating the two forms of chemical energy for the light reactions, NADPH and ATP. We have also seen how the light reactions contribute to the formation of oxygen gas during photosynthesis, as well as producing those two forms of chemical energy that will be used during the Calvin cycle to convert carbon dioxide into glucose. Remember, all of this is happening on the thylakoid membrane, which is just one part of one organelle, of one cell, of one organism. Wow, that was a lot of information. Feel free to repeat parts of this video until the steps make sense. Let's see if you understood this review of the light reactions by going over some questions. The two forms of chemical energy formed during the light reactions are CO2 and H2O, glucose and oxygen gas, ATP and NADPH, ADP and NADP+, carbohydrates and lipids. What is the source of the electrons which end up getting added to NADPH? Sunlight, water, CO2, ATP. Chlorophyll is green because green light is the most important for photosynthesis. True or false?